Hello, everyone, and welcome to another podcast episode of Andy's Witchcraft. I hope you are all having a wonderful week so far um, and are just having a restful end of summer. And for those of you going back to school soon, uh, I hope that you are preparing yourselves for what might be a lot of stress and that you're taking the time to relax uh, before all that stress has to come. <laughs> Uh, so today's episode, we are going to discuss a little bit about something um, in Buddhist culture traditions uh, that is being celebrated on the 30th of this month. Uh, we're going to talk about the Hungry Ghost Festival. So let's get started. The Hungry Ghost Festival uh, is celebrated either on the 14th or the 15th day of the 7th lunar month. Um, and whether it's the 14th or the 15th depends on the tradition and the culture. This day typically falls in either July or August in our solar calendar year. And the reason that the festival lands on this particular day uh, is that uh, Taoists and B Buddhists both believe that during this time, the gates of hell are open and hungry ghosts are being released from the netherworld to wander on earth among humans and look for food. So for those of you who don't know, um, or maybe forgot from my reincarnation podcast episode, which you can go check out uh, for a refresher, hungry ghosts are demon-like creatures described as the remnants of the dead who are afflicted with insatiable desire. So all their life is seeking to satisfy this desire for hunger or thirst. Um, but they are never satisfied. And this is because of bad deeds or evil intent that they carried out in their previous life. So um, the, this festival is celebrated by both Taoists and Buddhists, um, but they both have a little bit of slightly different things that they focus on. So Taoists focus on appeasing the wandering souls released from the netherworld. Traditionally during this month, Taoist priests perform rites and make food offerings and devotees would visit temples, repent their sins and pray for the happiness and avoidance of disasters. The Taoist name for the Hungry Ghost Festival is Chong Yuan Ji Festival. Um, and so... Uh, that's their focus. They focus mainly on the spirits and trying to get them to um, reach uh, a form of enlightenment where when they when they when their consciousness of hungry souls passes away, they can be reincarnated um, in a different level and have that desire satisfied. Buddhists, on the other hand, focus on filial piety. This is loyalty to their family and ancestors and trying to help their ancestors escape the hungry ghost realm and reach enlightenment. So Buddhists call this festival Yulon Pen Festival. Um, and so the, the, the main difference basically between Taoists and Buddhists is that Buddhists focus on the family and wanting to see their family again and wanting their family to be safe and happy. Taoists, on the other hand, focus mainly on not wanting these hungry ghosts to attack or harm them. Um, and so no matter what, or no matter which culture you come from, the Hungry Ghost Festival is celebrated to commemorate and memorialize ancestors. They just have different ways or different reasons for this purpose. Um, Ghost Month is a cultural event, and it's about paying respect to deceased family members and the deceased with no families. The festival centers around showing respect instead of being solely perceived as a celebration as some may think outside of the Chinese community. So a lot of these uh, individuals think of this kind of like um, the Day of the Dead in uh, Hispanic cultures, um, but it, it's a little bit different because it's not only about celebrating the life of, of these spirits. It's not, in fact, it's not about celebrating their human life at all. It's about wanting them to reach a certain level of enlightenment and wanting to protect us from malevolent spirits. That's mainly what Ghost Month is for. 
So I'm now going to talk a little bit about the history of the Hungry Ghost Festival. Uh, in Singapore, the festival appears to have been celebrated since the British arrived, being mentioned in newspapers as early as 1873. In the 1880s and 1890s, the festival was known as Sumbayang Hantu, which means praying to ghosts. The Hungry Ghost Festivals can be traced back to the Ulambana Sutra. In this sutra, the Buddha's disciples, Mahamaud Galia Yana, learned that his mother had been reborn as a hungry ghost. And so in one version of the story, Maud Galia Yana tried to feed his starving mother, but the food was grabbed by other hungry ghosts. So they stole her offerings. Um, in another version, however, he sent her a bowl of rice as an offering, but the food turned into flaming coals before it could enter her mouth. Now, witnessing this and knowing that this was happening, um, Maud Galia Yana went to the Buddha to learn what he can do for his mother. The Buddha told uh, this disciple that on the 15th day of the seventh month, the Sangha, which is the community who practices the Dharma, should fill clean basins with fruits and other food, along with offerings like incense and candles. All these individuals should come together in a great assembly, place the basins in front of an off altar, and recite mantras and vows. Then, seven generations of ancestors will be released from the lower realms, which are hungry ghosts, animal or hell beings, and they will receive the food in the basins and have blessings for a hundred years. The disciple did this, followed it, was devoted to rescuing his mother, and so now to this day this festival continues and it is used to commemorate filial piety in Buddhist cultures. Now this is just one origin story. There's another lesser known legend on the origin of the Hungry Ghost Festival. And this took place during the Tang Dynasty. At the time, the Dragon King of the Eastern Seas was jealous of a man called Li Liang Feng, who was a famous fortune teller. When Li boastfully claimed that no one could prove his predictions wrong, the Dragon King was infuriated. He sought to discredit Li and executed a plan which involved disobeying an order from the king of heaven. Um, and unfortunately, the plan was exposed and the dragon king was sentenced to death. The dragon king then approached Emperor Tang Taizong for help. And the emperor promised to do what he could and devised a plan to help save the dragon king's life. Unfortunately, this plan failed, and shortly after his death, the Dragon King again sought Emperor Tang out in a dream. He expressed his anger and frustration towards the Emperor for not keeping his promise, which resulted in his downfall as a wandering spirit. The very next day, which was the 15th day of the 7th lunar month, Emperor Tang ordered all Buddhist and Taoist priests in the capital to offer prayers, as well as food and drink for the Dragon King. And this marked the beginning of the Hungry Ghost Festival. So, as you can see, there's a lot of origins behind why we celebrate this day or what really started it. No matter what origin story you believe or if you believe in either of these, um, it doesn't really matter because the point is that this tradition has been consistent for centuries and it is something that is hopefully going to stick around for future generations um, to honor the hungry ghost relatives and pray that they reach a higher form of enlightenment in future reincarnations. Now I will discuss rituals done during the hungry ghost festival. So in Buddhist tradition specifically, this festival is celebrated to give the poor creatures in the hungry ghost realm some relief. Um, and so the point is, they cannot get their hunger satisfied, but with our help, with our assistance, with our offerings, they can reach some form of satisfaction. Um, and it's those who celebrate this day that perform special ceremonies to help avoid the wrath of the ghosts, especially in Taoist cultures. And this can include putting the family's ancestral tablets, paintings, or photographs on a, a table 
burning incense and preparing food three times that day for the particular ancestors. Plates of food are put out for the ghosts on the table and the people may choose to report their behavior to their ancestors to receive either a blessing or a punishment. Sort of the equivalent to Christian confessions, except instead of confessing to a priest, you're confessing to hungry ghosts. Um, and this is especially the case if you feel like you did harm to a relative in the past who is now a hungry ghost. This is your chance to apologize to them and make amends in hopes that it helps them find peace to reach enlightenment. These individuals want to feed a hungry ghost who have been wandering the land since the beginning of Hungry Ghost Month. Um, so Hungry Ghost Month is an entire month, but the festival is celebrated on one day, um, which this year, like I said, is August 30th. That's the day the festival is celebrated. But Ghost Month is commemorated for an entire uh, lunar month. On top of offerings of food, hungry ghosts are offered paper money, which is not real currency, but it's currency that is used in the afterlife. Um, and they're also offered uh, diversions, distractions from their suffering. And these can include plays, dancing, and opera. So a sort of performance is done for them. Buddhist priests sometimes strike bells to summon the dead. And then monks uh, perform some chanting, which helps the hungry ghosts find some peace. Paper lanterns are released in rivers and lakes during the night to guide the spirits of their ancestors to return home. And some Buddhists even have their children participate in activities by creating butterfly puppets. Now the reason butterflies are particularly significant is that according to legend, insects like butterflies, moths, and grasshoppers are believed to be the spirits of ancestors returning for a visit. So, um, and I personally believe this, I have for my entire life had um, a connection to butterflies. I've always seen a butterfly and suddenly I felt this strong sense of like happiness, a bit of sadness, um, but mostly a sense of peace. And I personally believe because it was my ancestors and passed on loved ones that were coming to visit me. So I really connect with this legend. I believe it. I will be making butterfly puppets hopefully sometime during this month. Maybe I'll do it on the actual day. Um, but yeah, so I'm very much excited. And it's just another sign that I was always meant to be a Buddhist. Um, but you know, I never thought I could be with my belief in the Abrahamic God. Um, but now I know. And so I'm participating in these traditions that I'm feeling really connected to. And this is one of them. So, yeah. Um, some individuals also hang orange decorations. These are done for good luck, wealth, and as an offering for the hungry ghost. So if this sounds a bit like Halloween, it's because it is. I think of this as the Buddhist equivalent to Samhain. Um, as during Samhain, we also believe that the veil between the living and the dead is thinned. Um, and it's a chance to connect with loved ones who have passed on in a stronger way. Uh, ghost month is the same thing. Except in, in this case, it's mainly because the realm between our, our, the living and the hungry ghost uh, realm. So not all our past on loved ones are hungry ghosts. Some pa uh, reincarnated into Buddhist beliefs. Some can be reincarnated into gods, demigods, animals, um, etc. This is particular for those who are reincarnated in the hungry ghost realm. So that's just a little bit of knowledge for you. And so, like I said, when I said this is very similar to Samhain and because they have the same purpose to com communicate and memorialize the dead and they have similar rituals and etc. A way to make this festival particularly witchy, especially if you're a Buddhist witch like me, uh, you can perform rituals and decorate in ways similar to how you would during Samhain. But the most important part is that you keep in mind that this is done for your ancestors. This isn't something to um, 
be romanticized. This isn't something you do for funsies, for trick-or-treating. No, this is a meaningful celebration and it's important that you keep that in mind when decorating. So don't just think, oh, I'm so excited for Halloween, so I'm gonna decorate now, blah, blah, blah. And like, that's the full reason for this. There is a deeper meaning and I'm going, and it's, I'm going to decorate now because it's ghost month and I wanna commemorate my ancestors and lost loved ones who are maybe lost in another realm um, and they're still suffering because of it and I want them to be reincarnated in a higher level maybe they'll come back in another life as a human and uh, then they'll finally be able to reach true enlightenment and get to heaven or whatever peaceful afterlife you believe in always keep that in mind so a couple uh, or a few Samhain rituals and traditions that you can do during this time are one creating an altar for your ancestors like I said putting out paintings that they made photographs tablets poems that we remind you of them all those things decorations maybe they left you something behind to inherit you could put that on their altar um, but that's one Another one are what we call ancestor stories. So talking to your living relatives to learn about your family history. If your grandfather passed away before you were born, maybe you could talk to your parents and ask them about your grandfather or your great grandfather or whatever. Whoever you feel like you wanna know more about, ask a living relative. They might even have a little bit of insight into how they were during their life. My third suggestion is to do a cemetery visit. So if you visit and tend the gravesite of a loved one at the cemetery, that is very meaningful. Um, and that will, I think they'll appreciate that, especially if you notice, oh, a really ancient ancestor who died maybe a hundred years ago and you live near their grave. No one has been tending to their grave in a while. I'm gonna wash their tombstone with water and soap and make it look nice and leave flowers for them. Do that because this is a time where especially loved ones who no living relative really thinks of them, this is an important thing to do for them. Um, and I believe if you wanna connect to your ancestors, this is a big suggestion you should do, especially during ghost month. The next suggestion is to reflect on yourself, your life over the past year, especially if um, you're what you wanna think, if I died tomorrow, would I feel accomplished in my life? And that's something you can reflect on. And if the answer is no, reflect on what can I do to feel accomplished? Because, you know, the sad truth is we never know when someone is going to go. Uh, pe young people die all the time. You can think, oh, they're going to live until their 90s and then boom, they are gone. Um, and I'm not doing this to scare you. Do not think I'm doing this to scare you. I'm not. I'm, I'm doing this because it's a reality. And the reality is you want to live a fulfilling life. Um, at least the majority of people do. And so this is a good time to reflect, have I lived a fulfilling life? What can I do? And maybe you could do a small thing. Donate $3 to um, those little donation jars. It, in Tim Hortons, they take donations for the, the kids camp. To a McDonald's does donations for the Ronald McDonald House Foundation, whatever it's called. Donate a few dollars to that. That's a small way you can live a, f a small fulfilling life. Your donation means something, right? So to do things like that, do a good deed, an act of kindness, pick up three pieces of garbage outside and help mother nature. That's a fulfilling life, small actions. It doesn't need to be huge like solve world hunger. No, it doesn't. Just something small where you could say, I lived a good life, I did good deeds, and if I die tomorrow, I." I would, I would not have any regrets. Basically, moral of the story, reflect on how you can live with no regrets. Because especially during ghost months where these are hungry ghosts, these are people, not really people, these are beings where they have desires and their desires are never satisfied because they have so many regrets and they have so much angst and they did so much uh, misdeeds that now they are never satisfied. You want to live a life where you are satisfied, where if you pass away, you are satisfied. You're okay. You're okay. Yeah, it would have been nice to live longer for sure. But, you know, 
at least you left the world making a small difference. And that's something you can do during this time. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Um, and then the last suggestion I have for you is because during Samhain, bonfire magic is a great thing, especially because fire and light and warmth is a good offering for hungry ghosts, as we believe. Maybe they're hung, they're cold all the time and they hunger that warmth. And so giving them fire to warm them up is a great offering for them. You can even um, burn... Uh, the fake paper money I mentioned, burn that and you can believe that it's released into the universe as an offering to them. So burning uh, things that you can part with, paper money, writing letters to your departed loved ones and burning them as a way to send those letters to them. That's another way. But bonfire magic is extremely powerful. I love candle magic and fire elemental magic. I love doing it. And yeah, so you could do that during this time as well. I'm going to end off this episode with things to avoid during the Hungry Ghost Festival. Now these are kind of like superstitions that they believe you should big no-nos during this time. Not only for the festival, but Ghost Month in general. So if you are celebrating, here are things that traditionally, if you want to follow the true tradition, you should avoid. Um, and the reason we want to avoid these is because a lot of things either get the attention of wandering souls that you do not want attention from, um, or if it angers the hungry ghosts and the souls. And so you don't want them to be angry at you, obviously. So here are things that you should not do um, so that you can avoid their anger. The first is to refrain from going out after dark. Um, and the reason for this is because the yin energy from the moon makes ghosts more powerful at night and it makes it easier for them to attack humans. Number two would be refrain from swimming. And this is because some hungry ghosts are called water ghosts. They live in the water. And so if you swim, you can get dragged away by one of these water ghosts, um, especially if you're swimming alone uh, or at night, even worse. Um, and so you want to be careful of that. Number three would be avoid stepping on or kicking offerings placed on the, along the roadside. That is... An obvious one, obviously, if if you're if someone is offering food to the hungry ghost and someone steps on their food, that would not go well. So don't do that. <laughs> and if you accidentally do it, apologize, leave a new offering for them, make amends, and move on. You know, accidents happen. I like to think hungry ghosts, as long as you make it up to them, they won't be as angry, right? Number four would be avoid peeking under the table of an altar. Um, aside from this being rude, imagine you're eating lunch and then someone's like un peeking under the table for whatever reason and you're trying to talk to them. That's a little not nice. So, um, but there could also be spirits feasting underneath the altar as devotees and priests send prayers. And if you're peeking in on them, they'll get a little angry because they like their privacy. So give them their privacy. Don't peek under the altar table. Number five would be avoid wearing red. It's believed that spirits are drawn to this color and that it stands out. Um, and this is an interesting one because my I was raised in a tradition where you're not supposed to wear red specifically at all for one year after a loved one passes away. Um, and I don't know why. My mom always said it was just disrespectful. But... This explanation, it kind of like substantiates that because like I was always like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. It's just the color, blah, blah, blah. But now that I'm researching into other cultures and traditions, I'm like, it's not just the color. It's not just the color. Okay. We're not wearing red. So <laughs> if you want to avoid wearing red to avoid unwanted attention from spirits. The sixth suggestion is avoid harming any insects or animals or any living thing on earth. Like, uh, like I said previously, it is believed that sometimes our ancestors and departed loved ones visit us as an animal. And so a fly or a spider might actually be the spirit of your great, great, great grandpa in the skies or something. So avoid harming any insects at this time. Uh, the seventh 
I think seventh suggestion um, to avoid is drugs and alcohol. Some people believe that it is easier for ghosts to possess those who are intoxicated. Now, um, like I said, you can have like one drink of alcohol and that's fine. But it's I think it's more avoid getting under the influence of drugs and alcohol so avoid getting drunk avoid getting high uh, all that stuff so don't think oh i can't have a sip of alcohol no that's fine you just want to basically be of sound mind so that you can not get a possessed so that you are in control of your body no spirit will get in control of your body the eighth suggestion uh, is to keep away from walls. Ghosts apparently like to stick to them. Um, and so to avoid, you know, getting grabbed by a ghost or possessed by a ghost, don't lean against the wall or anything like that. Uh, the ninth suggestion is to refrain from cutting your hair, shaving or hanging clothes outside of the house uh, during the night. Um, and I don't know why. I tried to look it up could not find anything um uh, i'm thinking because okay it's connected like to the next exam which the next thing to avoid uh, is getting married moving houses and buying new vehicles so basically making any drastic changes which i think cutting shaving your hair when you have long hair is a pretty drastic change um and so doing any drastic changes like that um, some believe that hungry ghosts get jealous of material possessions. Again, they're all about I want, I want, I want, but I can never have. So if you have something they want and you just disregard it and or what they appear to think is being disregarding, they're going to get mad that you're taking advantage of something that they want, that you already have. So that's why that. Um... And yeah, um, and as for the hanging clothes outside of the house during the night, um, I believe it's because it's believed that ghosts, hungry ghosts kind of like to slip into your clothing. If they hunger and desire for clothing because they don't, they don't have nice clothes in the lower realms, according to Buddhist traditions. And so if you hang the clothes that they think are nice outside of the house, they will slip into them. And if you put them on, you get possessed or you get grabbed by the ghosts according to their traditions um and so yeah so those are all of my uh not my suggestions but the suggestions of the traditions who follow this festival and this month celebration those are all things to avoid if you want to follow those traditions so that is it for this episode. Um, it's very short because there's not much about this festival. It's very straightforward. Commemorate the dead, give them offerings, help them get reincarnated to a higher, uh, higher level so that they can reach enlightenment and reach heaven someday um, and avoid angering the spirits. <laughs> That's the gist of it, basically, yeah. Um, so yeah, that is it for this episode. Um, it's going to be posted now. My podcast is also on Spotify, so you can look up Andy's Witchcraft on Spotify. And eventually, I will get around to posting this episode up. I'm trying to post episodes uh, one one a day to catch up to posting all my episodes on Spotify. So, but if you're listening on YouTube, give my channel a like, a comment, and a subscribe, um, and share it. If you're on Spotify, share this episode, um, kind of spread the word. It would be a great support for me during um, this time of wanting to do something I'm passionate about. I would love to do my passion and spread it to other people and hopefully inspire other people to follow their passions someday. So if you want to help me in doing that, please share this episode. Uh, you can follow me on social media. Uh, on TikTok, it's at Sacred Mood Divination. On Tumblr, I'm at Sacred Moon Divination. Um, and Instagram, I'm at Andy's Witchcraft. So you could follow me on those. Um, and in the link tree, if you want to join my Discord server, Crystal Caverns, uh, that link will be in the link tree. Um, it would be great to have you and to interact with some listeners. Uh, I would love to hear from you guys and build connections with the witch community. Uh, and yeah, so please do consider joining. If you have any video suggestions on things you want me 
to do a video on. I also have a video ideas link, Google doc form, Google form um, that you could fill out so that I could do an episode on it. Please consider doing that as I would love to hear your ideas and would like to uh, talk about things that you guys are interested in. So that is about it for today. Thank you for listening. Blessed be everyone. Have a wonderful day, week, month, and year.